Hey guys, what's going on? Kyle here today. I am back with another video. This one's going to be a little quicker, hopefully, than uh, the normal stuff, the normal review. Uh, this one today, we're going to talk about the fact that HTC has announced their pre order date, the price, and uh, shipping window for the HTC Vive. Um, this came Sunday on the 21st. Uh, which was news to a lot of people, uh, which was, I thought, interesting timing as everybody was in the thick of it with MWC Mobile World Congress. Um, so, what are the release, what's, when, when can you pre-order it? Monday, leap day, February 29th of 2016. Leave it to Valve to leave the pre-order day to be something to start on a day that only happens once every four years. Leave it to Valve. Uh, it's coming in at a whopping $799, and it's expected to ship, uh, as they say on their website, early April. No actual date specified yet. Um, so what are you gonna get for that $800? Well, you'll get the headset, so there's that. You're also gonna get two of their motion trackers that you can use and set it up in your room to know so that the Vive has better spatial awareness for you. And then you're also going to get two of their touch controllers. Comparing that with the Oculus, which is coming in at a pre-order of $600 basically, $599. With the Oculus, you do get a couple of games, one of them being uh, Eve Valkyrie. And then you do get the headset, of course, but instead of the touch controllers, the Oculus version of them, you're only going to get an Xbox One controller, which if you're a gamer, you're probably going to have a controller that you like to use, so it's probably going to be a wasted accessory for a lot of people, not necessarily required. Valve has released their compatibility testing tool, which is also a benchmarking tool, to see how well your system is going to perform with Steam VR and the Oculus, and not the Oculus Rift, with the HTC Vive specifically, but it will give you a good idea of how it's going to perform with the Rift. Let's be honest, because it's testing, it's actually testing your machine and telling you what kind of experience you can expect to get. <clears throat> and it's actually a, it's an actual benchmark too. It's not just a simple tool that checks to see if you have uh, a list of the compatibility or recommended components, which Oculus, that's all they have right now. It's just a, a test that'll go through and check, 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 check. Yeah, you're good. It just checks to make sure you have the hardware. It doesn't actually test it and tell you what kind of ex performance you can expect. That's where the Steam software comes in. <laughs> I'll put a link to it down in the description down below. Um, I can tell you that on my machine, which I'll, probably while I'm rambling right now, I'll try to show you what's going on. But on my machine, I got a compatible score, not great, but towards a good experience. Um, and granted, I've got an Intel Core i7 4790K, two 970s, and SLI. Sometimes I disable it depending on the game. And I've also got 16 gigs of RAM. So it's a decent machine, but it's still not gonna be able to push the best VR experience possible. So just know that if you have a 970 and you've got a decent spec, you'll probably be okay, but it's not gonna be, it's not gonna, I mean, as with all things, right? If you don't have the best, you're not gonna get the best when it comes to components in your system. And when it comes to VR, the point of diminishing return exceeds that what it does when you're gaming on a, on a standard 1080p or even 1440p panel. Like on 1440p right now, I am past the point of diminishing returns with the second 970. <clears throat> but with VR, you really want something like a 980 Ti because you get that six gigs of frame buffer, you get the extra processing power of the extra core, CUDA cores, and so on. So. Just know that if you're looking at getting one of these, you're going to need a massive computer. So hopefully, if you are looking at getting one of these, you already have a massive computer. You're okay with being an early adopter and you're okay with all of the costs, both in terms of money 
in terms of time, in terms of enjoyment experience from setting it up, because there's gonna be a lot of issues with this thing coming out. Just, it's just a simple fact. The good news, however, is I think that a, since the HTC Vive is with Steam VR, working with Valve, I hope that they'll be able to then quickly get their games, um, at least a handful of their game library, the Valve game library rather, uh, hopefully they can get that library set up and ready to go and do the conversion or whatever is required to be able to play games like Half-Life and Half-Life 2 with VR. That would be cool. I don't know how well it'll work, but stuff like that would be cool. And so, with that being said, I've rambled on enough. I need more coffee. And I've got to get this edited and get it out the door but so I can get dressed and get myself out the door to go to work. So with all that being said, thank you guys for checking this out. I hope you have a great day. I hope that you give me a like if you like this video, give me a dislike if you hated it, or even disliked it. You don't have to hate it to dislike it. Um, leave me a note down in the comments below what you're gonna do or what your thoughts are on, about VR. You can also hit me up on Twitter, let me know, at Geek and Dad. <clears throat> and if you'd hit that subscribe button, if you feel like I've earned it, I would surely appreciate it. But until next time, geek on. Espresso roast coffee is just delicious with a little bit of cream, a little bit of sugar in the raw. Mm, so good.